Let's start with heaters and coolers. Okay, so let's start with the several types we have. We have the shell and tube heat exchanger, which is the most common one. We have plates heaters, we have a spiral heaters, and we have tubular or double tube or double pipe heaters. Well, let's go for the first one, shell and tube. As the name implies, we are going to have a very large shell which covers all the inside tubes. Typically, you will have plenty of tubes. I mean, 20, 100, 500, etc. The more tubes you have, the more control and heat exchange you will have, and of course, it will be more expensive, harder to maintain, and so on. So, as the name implies, you have tubes inside and a shell outside covering all the tubes. You got a hot fluid, which typically is the one with higher temperature, and you got the cold fluid, which is the one with lower temperature. As you can imagine, cold fluid is going to increase in temperature, hot fluid is going to decrease in temperature. Therefore, this heat exchanger will act as both heater and cooler, depending on the fluid. We can have multiple tubes inside, different arrangements, sizing, etc. And we also add baffles because we need to force movement. So here, let me continue with the parts of a heat exchanger. You will have the tube or nozzle, so inlet goes here, the fluid goes here. You have a head cover, so the fluid will not go directly here. So it, you are forcing this through here. These are the baffles, which allows movement of the fluid. Therefore, the more time it takes, the more time it has for transfer. And eventually it goes back all the way back here. Now, this was the outside, uh, outside material. The inside material will be those on the tubes right here. We have vertical baffles, we have horizontal baffles, we have support saddles right here outside so they won't bend or broke. We have the shell cover. Typically you, they will be also covered with uh, material which allows or will not allow heat transfer outside the ambient. And let's get more into the arrangements. These are the several arrangements you can use on shell and tube heat exchangers. Let's verify front end. So the front end is this size right here. You can see there are several ways you can be arranging. Also different shell types. You have this one which, which is K type. Then you have different cross flows, etc. And the rear end. Many times you will have no actual end such as this one right here. That's why you, it's not a gray area. So remember, fluid goes in, transfers, fluid goes out, transfers. And more specifically, the different type of configuration. This is A for this piece, K for all these, and T because there is no extra data. You can see this is typically used also for evaporation. This will allow to form gases right here. Also BEM, as you can see, there is different shells on all these. Actually, this one and this one are the same. A type, A type, A type, and what else do we have here? Well, essentially what you're changing is that here we have different amounts of passes. So you have one tube and then the tubes go back. Whereas in this case, the tubes just go to the other side. So it depends on the tab on the number of tubes and so on this will change as well. So the configuration, uh, I'm not going to get that into specifics, but it's very important guys to note that you can either have a square pitch, a square pitch rotated, triangular and rectangular, rhomboid or whatever, even triangular, whatever shape you can imagine on the model, you can apply it to the configuration of the little tubes. Now it's very important uh, to know how to keep maintenance on the tubes inside the heater and outside the heater. That will be the shell. So one of the largest problems are that you require a mechanism in order to clean all these little uh, fallings right here and the outside of the tubes as well. More examples, this one is outside the tubes. 
that will be inside the shell, outside the little tubes. So you can see the outside material it might also be very caustic or might be all dirt or not clean with impurities, causes falling, etc.